Here's your host, Alex Garrett. And welcome inside to another edition of the Alex Garrett Podcast Network. A week ago, released from the hospital and doing the follow-ups as needed, finally got out today. And because the St. John's Red Storm are actually in the regional in Charlottesville, I wanted to stop by Jack Kaiser Stadium. And there was no watch party, but it was cool to get a little bit of a picture in front of the stadium. And on my social media, you might have heard my call of the game-tying single yesterday. I didn't get around to doing play-by-play today of St. John's for a highlight reel. But the highlight reel is... The Johnnies are alive, so how about that? It's a bright note to a week that's been quite chaotic and quite wild with a president becoming a convicted felon. I'll let you decide what you're going to think on that. Um, I'll I'll also drop in the link that they believe even the left-leaning intelligencer is saying that prosecutors contorted the law. That's what they write about in a piece about how they got Trump, but they contorted the law. So maybe you'll read that piece as well. But what I really want to focus on tonight, what I really want to focus on with the energy I got, is what's happening tomorrow. 40,000 American Israeli, American Jews, will be lining the streets of Fifth Avenue on Israel Day 2024. There is ramped up security along the route to protect those Jewish folks from protests that have quite become grotesque, if you ask me. I mean, the Brooklyn Museum now, are you freaking kidding me? That is a Jewish institution, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's very steeped in Jewish tradition. And Clearly, when you attack a museum that is of Jewish nature, okay, you are anti-Semitic. You are anti-Semitic. So the very act of going to the Brooklyn Museum is disgusting because it shows you have no respect for even the American Jews. Can we stop kidding ourselves that they do? They don't. And that's why I pray to God today, the eve of... Israel Day, Day of Israel, down the streets of Fifth Avenue, that they are able to march peacefully, that they are able to march uninterrupted, that the NYPD is on it every step of the way to protect the Jewish men and women and children of the city as they honor their homeland, you know, their homeland, Israel. Their ancestry, I guess I should say also, Israel. Because the Jewish community is very much a fabric of the diversity of this city. And to even deny them that right would in and of itself be anti-Semitic. To protest that right would be anti-Semitic toward American Jews who have nothing to do with what's going on in the cabinet of Netanyahu. Nothing to do with it. They just want to live their lives peacefully here in New York City. So they should be able to march peacefully up Fifth Avenue and prayerfully without any interruption. That's my prayer tonight on the eve of uh, the Day of Israel, 2024. And the 40,000. Because... If the, and I might sound controversial here, but if the Irish can march down Fifth Avenue uninterrupted on March 17th, if Italian Americans can march proudly down Fifth Avenue or up Fifth Avenue uh, every Columbus Day in October, then why shouldn't those of Jewish descent be able to march peacefully? Why shouldn't they? Because Jewish people should be able to march freely in their own city without fear of the bratty, snot-nosed protesters 
that don't even want the good of the Jewish people of any kind. If they're going to protest even the Brooklyn Museum. That's all you need to know. The encampments are one thing, but when you start going to museums that are rich in Jewish history, that should tell you a lot. It should tell you a lot. If the fact that those of Jewish descent couldn't even go to campus after the, these encampments in Colombia uh, pushed them out. If that didn't tell you anything, maybe the fact that they're marching now at the Brooklyn Museum and protesting and more than that getting clashes, you know, becoming clashing uh, at the Brooklyn Museum tells you a lot, doesn't it? I think it does. And that's why I'm saying this today, that I pray tomorrow. And what they're calling it is the Celebrate Israel Parade NYPD News saying NYPD officers will be on the scene. U.S. officials will be implementing heightened security. This is all happening at tweeting on X. The parade occurred between 62nd Street and 74th Street. And even Mayor Adams has stepped in and said, okay, here's how we're going to keep the Jewish community safe as they celebrate Israel. Their homeland tomorrow. So I hope this podcast out in the universe says, we hear you. God says, I hear you and I will protect those of those who march in the parade with all my might. So that they may parade freely. And then it could be literally just another parade of celebrating the culture of our city. The Jewish population is part of our culture in New York City. And that must be celebrated and honored without interruption. That's all I'm asking for tomorrow. Because my fear is while they only, while the the quote unquote free Palestine movement wanted to just glue themselves down in the Thanksgiving Day parade last year. When it comes to actual Jewish people, the rhetoric isn't just protest. That's my issue. So now tomorrow, 40,000 of Jewish uh, folks celebrating Israel, pray for them. We need to pray for them. So that they are not harmed in any way, shape, or form. Thanks be to God. One last thing, because I see uh, it's in the news today. While some might find, and I don't like the hang of the flag upside down on the Trump conviction, but while some might find what happened Thursday injustice, for those who feel that way, I've got some justice that'll serve the entire city for the better. Son of Sam, serial killer David Berkowitz, was for the 12th time denied parole this week. Denied parole for the 12th time. And I pray, okay, I pray that those denials... will carry over into cop killer parole deadlines. If we can keep Son of Sam locked up, so too we can keep any cop killer locked up. Because that's just the right way to honor the, the fallen in the line of duty 
honor the families of the fallen. So that those like Detective Ramos and Lou and now Jonathan Diller are not dying in the line of duty with vain. But the, their deaths show that we have to and the, and the harsh penalties and harsh punishment against the cop killer show that cop killing is no longer acceptable in New York. That's what we have to show. And every time a cop killer is up for parole, there seems to be some idea that they're going to be released. And that's not the message we want to send in such a heated anti-cop defund the police era. So if son of Sam can say behind bars, so too can the killer of Detective Diller, of Detectives Ramos and Lou, of also cops killed 30 years ago. The justice, no matter how long time is gone, will be to keep these cop killers behind bars, just like the efforts to keep Berkowitz and Sirhan Sirhan behind bars. A cop killer must be treated with such punishment if Son of Sam and Sirhan Sirhan are not released either. And I'm going to post the story of the one, I believe the very first victim who spoke with the New York Post this week alone, who lost her eye after being shot five times by David Berkowitz. Her name is Wendy Savino, who on April 9th, 1976, Berkowitz waltzed up to her car and started laughing as he shot her five times. She lost her right eye in the shooting, but is finally recognized as one of Berkowitz's victims. Do you know how long Miss Savino, who does not have Her eye, right eye, has been carrying around the sketch of David Berkowitz. Are you ready for this one? From the day I was shot, which was April 9th, 1976, she has Sketched, had a sketch artist from the NYPD sketch out the details through her tracheotomy, through her trach in 1976. So justice is now served, I think, for Wendy Savino as being recognized. I think this is a part where we see the justice system does work. But let's make it work a little more, folks. Can we do that? Let's make it work a little more. As in, if these parolees and these deadlines are denied, you know, if, if parole is denied for Berkowitz and Sirhan Sirhan, that's the best kind of justice for victims of David Ber- oh, for victims. And we should extend that justice. Yes, extend that justice for families of 
loved ones who died in the line of duty. May a, a cop killer never see the light of day. Because that is true justice. I'm Alex Garrett. Enjoy the weekend. If you are going to celebrate Israel tomorrow, please be safe. And I know the NYPD will step up and do their damnedest to keep our city safe from the tyranny that is these rabid protesters who are more grotesque than protesting. Enjoy the Rangers tonight. We'll talk to you soon on the Alex Garrett Podcast Network.